Did you know last month the Music Meister was finally introduced into comics? Which might sound crazy as a lot of people know about the guy. Because despite not being from the comics until last month, he's been in one kid cartoon, two live action series, one adult TV MA cartoon, and even Lego games. So how does this make any sense? I'll explain. He was first introduced in the Batman the Brave and the Bold, as a recurring villain who had the ability to hypnotize people and turn them to his puppets. He would have an episode dedicated to him in the first season, where he'd hypnotize the entire world, except for Batman and Black Canary, who have to stop him. Eventually they do, of course, at the end of the episode, and that's it. The character afterwards would end up being brought into the time comics as a background character. But, in my opinion, he at least made a very big impression, and he clearly did make an impression on a lot of people, because he would return, and would return again, but usually in minor roles. In my opinion, the character on the show was very much a fan favorite, because a lot of people were asking for the character to return, so I'm going to presume he was a fan favorite. Overall, the character also has a very distinct look that makes him really pop when he's on screen, while also really just going for it. Because a lot of characters usually want to be more dark and gritty, but the character is not afraid of being silly. His powers are kind of silly. But, they are also extremely powerful and useful. And he would also make such a big impression, he would be a playable character on LEGO Batman 3. Here, he wasn't included in the story, but he was a playable character in the world map, and his costume from before. During the second season of Supergirl and the third season of The Flash, a musical crossover would occur, which was a Glee reunion. A TV show that actors from both shows and other TV shows had appeared on. Therefore, they had all the actors from each show show up. But they needed a music villain. And there's not really any from the comics, therefore they brought Music Meister, making his live action debut in a suit that was less than the purple one in my opinion. But he was also not a metahuman here, instead he was an imp who just loves music. Which in my opinion is a fine idea, because if he was just a metahuman, he wouldn't be able to take on Marshall Manhunter and Supergirl. And this year he would be brought into Holly Quinn's show on HBO Max, the third season an outfit that in my opinion I'm sorry to say, I really dislike. But story-wise, he's okay. He was just an extra villain for Harley to fight, or talk with, or etc. Either way, as a character, didn't make much of an impression like he did when he first appeared in Batman the Brave and the Bold, but he still otherwise appeared. And that brings us to now. He's been recently brought into comics in Robin issue 16, 2022, where he appears as just as a throwaway villain, but the takeaway is I really like that he's back in his original purple suit, because he hasn't been in it since the LEGO game. And the reason why I'm excited for that is because I really, really like his suit. I know it's stupid, I know it's silly, but in all honesty, I think it kind of works. There's not really any Batman villains that really do purple. I mean, Catwoman did, but she's not really doing it anymore. So maybe Music Meister can work in that fashion. Overall, I like Music Meister, either the Imp or the Metahuman. But I will say, if he's going to be a Batman villain, I think Metahuman works more than Imp because... I think it would be a little overpowered if he was an imp. Metahuman, there are Batman metahuman villains, like Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze, so I think that could work. Anyways, that's it. Like always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!